I've got wonderful news to share with you, my friends, because you remember a few nights ago I had Lonnie and William here, and we were talking about a cleanup effort going down in Marizzo. They are back on the KUM couch, and we have some numbers to share. And Lonnie, we'll start with you. Congratulations, first of all, on putting off this event. Yes, the that's amazing. Is. And I was reading the actual numbers on the set. I thought mm -hmm. there was a typo in the teleprompter, honestly, because the, oh, the amount no, of trash you guys picked up right. yes. is staggering. A lot. Yes, uh, that William can tell you a lot more about the numbers actually. Yeah, so we got over 700 pounds of uh, debris and that's just divers and free divers jumping in the water. And, just uh, off the Marito Pier Off alone. the pier in one section. So they jumped in and we focused on one section um, this year because the past couple of years we uh, focused on different parts. So mm -hmm. this year we got one place that we hadn't touched for the past two. And um, free divers uh, and scuba divers went down and collected 109 bags, mesh bags of trash. Mm -hmm. out of the bottom of the pier and that added up um, we had people weighing the trash as it came out of the water and add up to se more than 700 pounds 700 pounds yeah of trash. yeah and then on top of that we had tires a plethora of tires um 40 40, 40 tires to be exact came up from the bottom of the pier mm -hmm. um, that doesn't include all the fiberglass carnage and um long lines and floats and stuff that just been dis uh, disregarded yeah I, uh, I wanted to ask exactly what types of trash was that uh down there a yeah. lot of it a lot of it was uh well, the tires for one thing. A lot of it was marine um, based, so boats. A lot of boats broken, had broken down inside um, inside that channel there. So pieces of the, those boats eventually arise and uh, uh, turn into essentially these wrecking balls of the reef. So mm -hmm. when high currents and surf and surge come in through that channel, each one of those pieces of debris can have the capability of breaking coral uh, down the reef. Mm -hmm. And if we if that stuff's left there and say we get a really good typhoon, the typhoons are great because they do rip all the sediment off, but at the same token, it's throwing a whole bunch of debris and um, ending up like inside places that it shouldn't be. So inside mm -hmm. these beautiful coral colonies and um, up, on, up on shore, you know, that where people are walking. It's just, uh, yeah, having the stuff down there. That's why we started this project is to make sure that we don't destroy that coral um, with our debris. Now, were you guys underwater and, you know, like all the divers, all the volunteers, were you guys underwater until all the trash was picked up or is, is there more work to be done? We've been doing this for three years now and unfortunately we left the place with still lots down there. Uh. We, yeah, it seemed like this year there was just a lot more than the previous years. So it just doesn't really seem like it's getting too better but we are making a difference mm -hmm. it is a band-aid but there's still lots to be done down there there's still tons of things to do and of course because it's underwater there are like you know potentially tens of thousands of your fellow guamanians that drive by there every yes. month and they yeah. never even know They'll yeah they, know. no one's ever going to know unless you free dive or you put a tank on and go down there so that is no crazy. one knows and that's the only time we get to clean it up is once a year when we do marita pier project mm -hmm. yeah so and in there there's stories to be told so you go into the channel there's pieces of history of the village you know like boats that have been abandoned and you know these ghost boats that ended up at the bottom of the channel um, mm -hmm. Many of their uh, operators never made it back to land, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's also another story of these semi-subs that just sank um, off of one of the uh, tour operations there, and it's still sitting down there. Um, things like that, you know, people will never know, but they're environmental disasters that affect that, the entire village. Mm -hmm. And unless we're going down there and seeing it, nobody will hear about it. And since we had such a great turnout um, this year, 124 volunteers showed wow. up. Um, 59 of them were divers, about another 40 some of them were um, free divers. And uh, they, they know the story. They've gone down there and they've seen what has happened. I mean, there's sailboats, uh, there's a sailboat down there, uh, cars, there's two cars down there. Uh, somebody just reported another, they found another car down, <laughs> down the channel. I thought there was just one. There's another car down the channel that must have got moved by the typhoons. Um, yeah, and what was great was we had people from different organizations diving that same day. And it was fun because I got to actually tell them a bit of what I knew about the channel as well. Mm -hmm. um, what I've heard growing up in the village, you know, and some of the, some of the interesting things that, um, you know, sh really should be addressed. And uh, people who are in these organizations have that opportunity to come down and, you know, maybe learn a little bit from, uh, you know, the locals walking around down there during the project. Hopefully, and ho undoubtedly, you guys are going to inspire other people to, to do the same. But there was also another event. 
yes. that you guys put on the fair. Yes, so we that, had that was the, above ground. Yes, so <laughs> we had for people who didn't want to get wet or weren't scuba certified, weren't comfortable being in the water. There was the Mother Earth Conservation Fair. Those of us who like don't like holding our breath. Yeah, <laughs> no, uncomfortable. Um, yeah, so we had um, approximately thirty to fifty people register for the event. We had Yoji come out, uh, Department of Ag with their cocoa birds. Everyone loved the cocoa birds there. Uh, the sea turtles from Department of Ag. Um, lots more from EOG, like the G uh, Guam Plant Extinction Prevention Program. So they brought a lot of um, endangered native species here at the fair and was able to talk about it with a lot of the students and families that came. So it was a really good turnout and I think people enjoyed it. We had food trucks as well, so it was a hot day and people were done at the fair, done at the cleanup. They had um, something nice and cold to very nice. Yeah. Well, I know you guys, you know, you're very proud of your work and you, you are, mm -hmm. should, you should be, and you are being commended by the community. You know, thank mm -hmm. you for all that you guys have done, but I know you're not trying to corner the market or get exclusivity <laughs> on this. Um, mm -hmm. If there are other people who feel as you do and they say like somebody wants to go up at Taragi or Tengisen or like yeah. another mm -hmm. place that's near to dear in their, their heart mm -hmm. and they yeah. want to organize a similar event, like what advice yeah. would you give them in saying, these are the calls you have to make. This is, you know, this is how you have to handle this logistically. Because this is not an easy thing to put together. No, it's <laughs> not. But you know, taking it on, it's it really is an opportunity for you to to share your voice. You know, talk about mm -hmm. problems you have in your village. You, whether you're young, old. I mean, if you have issues in your village that you want addressed, it's not that hard to get out and talk about it. That's, but that's where you have to start is talk about it. You gotta talk mm -hmm. to your friends. You gotta talk to people who you think will help you um, get this project started. For me, I, when I went down there and saw that, the first person I went to was one of my buddies. He, and I was like, hey man, I wanna get this project going. What do you think we should do to get it, get it up and operational? Mm. We sat down at, for a little bit and talked about it and it came up with a plan. And just spending that little amount of time designing a strategy to address something in your village, something that you think matters to you, um, is is not that hard. And mm -hmm. when you have people by your side who are going to support you, and trust me, there always yes. will be somebody will be there to help mm -hmm. you out. Um, and you know, you'll see the good in people. And it's a great opportunity for that. You get to see something get done in your village, your home, and you also get to see the best sides of people doing it. They come together and they want to show you, you know, that they're there with you. They're right by your side. And Trust me, it's not hard. You have the people, and I don't think that it's going to take, I mean, it will take time. It will take a bit of your time, but, you know, if you love what you're doing, then push for it, and you'll, you'll get it done. Excellent job. Okay, so now, for the people that weren't there and able to make it, and for people all over the world, I know you guys have an event page, you guys have yes. video, you guys have pictures and everything. Where can mm -hmm. we find that? Because we want to see the fruits of your labor. So on Facebook, we actually have, we still have our event page up and people have been posting their videos and pictures from the event. So you can look up Marito Pier Project on Facebook and you should be able to see all the pictures and all the videos that we took on that day, including from the cleanup and the fair itself. Good deal. Well, I've got mm -hmm. a lot of friends and family that live down in Marito, so see just Masi from all of them on behalf of everybody. And you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Jason. For all right, we look forward to seeing what other projects you you guys come up with. Absolutely. Indeed, All right, please stay tuned. There's more after this. Visitors make memories on our island. They contribute millions of dollars every year to our community. So what does that mean? Tourism keeps our island's culture alive. And it strengthens our identity as Chamoru. Tourism creates opportunities for local businesses to thrive. The dishes I create feature local ingredients. These ingredients come from...